that's basically how you go and wire your lights in line. You can daisy chain those, whatever makes your life easier. Um, then what I do is I usually go and just wrap up all my wires. Um, same thing, usually this is where I'll throw a zip tie or tape or something around them. I stuff them down there and then I leave it as is and I move on to my next light because I don't want to bury this yet because I want to test everything first before I go and make everything permanent and buried so I can't check it later because if I did make a mistake, I want to be able to access that pretty easily. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. All right guys, so we're just installing the last couple lights here. So first step when you're installing landscape lights is really just choose the fixtures and stuff that you're gonna use. I mean, in this case, we've got some wash lights, we've got some up lights, and we've got some path lights. Determine, um, based on how many lights you're gonna use, what size transformer you need. And they usually say go and mount that first so you can get ready to test everything before you bury it. Second step is we just run all our wire out above ground so we know we have enough. I'm going to go and I'm going to leave loops of extra wire at every single light so that way I know I have room to cut into it. I know I have room to move that light. So always leave extra wire but that's your second step. Just go and run all your wire from your transformer to each light so that you know you have enough. The next step is setting your lights and that's what we're gonna do here and then we'll get into wiring it and before I go wire anything usually what I do is I'll just I'll just get my lights set up I've got my wire run already some of this is already buried just because we have some um, hardscapes we have to go under but basically I'm just gonna dig myself a little hole so I have room for my fixture as well as I'm gonna have room uh, for some extra wire and stuff so we're gonna use our trusty mallet we're gonna take our very solid ground stake and we're just gonna pound that into the ground. So that way we can make sure we get it nice and secure. From there, we're just gonna go and screw our light in. And now we're gonna get that pointed the way we want. So we're gonna have that feature in this wall here. And then from there, what we're gonna go do is bury it but I like to get all my lights set first so that then I can just go and I can bury one at a time and a good rule of thumb is that as you go around wiring especially if you're new to this that's why I say have your transformer set up already and if you have your main wire wired in even if it nothing's buried yet at least if you're not sure of yourself you can go and flick on your transformer and you can test that you've wired those lights properly uh, so that's why I always like to be able to test it before I bury anything and make anything permanent but step three just go around and set all your lights so our next step is wiring our lights so in this case we've got a wire coming from our last light it's coming to this fixture and then we got to go to the last light on the line so what's going to happen is we've got our wire coming in and I'm going to recommend 12 uh, 12 2 low voltage cable for any of your do-it-yourself projects you're going to ensure that you don't have any voltage drop and um, that you leave your room yourself room for expansion. So we've got our wire coming from our last light and then we've got our wire that's going to be going out to our next light and then we've got our wire from our fixtures here. So we've got our two wires coming from our fixture. So now what we're going to use for this one is we're going to use our BBS2 connectors, our snap lock connectors that are gel filled. Uh, we're going to use those to wire it in. So how we go and do that is so our 12-2 comes basically together. We're going to split that we're going to strip the ends of that and just clean that up a bit. Okay, so we've got that clean. We're going to take our wire that's going to the next light. We're going to strip both of the ends of that wire. So basically, we're working with four wires so far. And then we're going to have our fixture wire. We're going to have two of those. It's usually a smaller wire. It's usually a 16 or 18 gauge. And do the same thing, we're going to strip those. And now we're ready to go wire this. So how we go do that with these connectors, if you look closely on the bottoms, there's three terminals, three ports. 
two larger ones for our 12 gauge wire and one smaller one for our 16 or 18 gauge wire. So what's going to happen is every light from our last fixture, we're going to split this wire and one of the wires is going to go into one of the larger ports. And then we have our wire that's going to our next fixture. One of those wires is going to go into the larger ports. And then lastly, we've got our two wires from our fixture. One of those is going to go into this port, into the smaller port. So we're going to put that in and then we just snap it tight and voila, we're good to go. Something I like to do after I'm done both my connections is either wrap it in electrical tape, a zip tie, something like that that just helps keep it from pulling apart. Although these do a good job, you can never be too careful. So we're not quite done yet because that's only half of it because now we've still got one of our wires coming from our last fixture that we're going to throw again in the larger terminal. We've got our wire that is going to our next fixture, our 12 gauge going to our next fixture. That's going to go into the other large port. And then lastly, we've got our other wire from our fixture that's going to go into the smaller terminal. I'm going to push that up there in our gel filled BBS2 connectors, snap that closed and we're all done. Uh, and that's basically how you go and wire your lights in line. You can daisy chain those, whatever makes your life easier. Um, then what I do is I usually go and just wrap up all my wires. Um, same thing, usually this is where I'll throw a zip tie or tape or something around them. I stuff them down there and then I leave it as is and I move on to my next light because I don't want to bury this yet because I want to test everything first before I go and make everything permanent and buried so I can't check it later because if I did make a mistake, I want to be able to access that pretty easily. Uh, so a question I get asked a lot is, so I've got this light and then I've daisy chained all my lights. I've got my lights going out that way, um, but I've got one light that's you know out that way. Do I run my wire from this one all the way to that one and then back again? Well, an easier way to do that is just to tee off your existing line and you're more than uh, able to tee off your existing line. The only difference is you're not gonna be able to use your BBS2 connectors. So when you're using these small, or uh, these snap lock connectors, they only have two holes for the 12 gauge wire and one for the fixture wire. So if you're teeing off, you're actually gonna have three 12 gauge wires. One coming from your last fixture, one going out to your next, and then you're gonna have another one that's gonna be going out to that far out their fixture, which yes, you can tee into it, but what you need to do is you need to use your DBRY connectors. So these are bigger gel filled connectors. Um, they can show you how to use, but basically what you do is you make those connections, you make that T, you just wrap all your wires together, put them in the morette, throw them in this gel filled tube. And the reason for that is because this is large enough to handle three 12 gauge wires. You can push it to four if you're lucky, but three is a good number. And that way you can easily go and tee off your line and then keep going with your daisy chain. And we'll get to the last light, which I'll show you how to wire because it's one of the issues that people run into most when they first start installing landscape lights. We're in the home stretch here, uh, basically our last light. Usually, like I said, I, I like to go and set all my lights first, but I wanted to show you this. So I am gonna show you what I do um, just with my small little shovel. I like to, I've already got all my wire run, so I know where my lights are going to go. I want to dig a little hole that's just big enough for the light fixture. I've got my rubber mallet that comes with all our kits, and I'm just going to hammer that in now. So I want to make sure I get that nice and secure. Take my fixture, and I'm going to go screw that in. All right, now what we're gonna do is this is our last light on our fixture. So unlike our previous wiring connections where we had a wire coming from our last fixture and wire going out, we don't have that. And this is one of the mistakes that most people uh, run into the most is there's not as many wires. So when you're looking at our snap block connectors here, you've got three holes, but we're not gonna use them all. And that's where people sometimes get confused. They think on the last light, we only need to use one connector, uh, but that's not the case. You still need to use two connectors and I'll show you what we do here. So we've got our wire coming from our last fixture. We're gonna do the same as we always do. 
We're going to strip that wire, split it apart, strip the ends. So we've got two wires, and then we've got our two wires coming from our fixture. Now, this is what usually happens, and this is where people will run into an issue, is they got three holes here, they got four wires there, how do we make that work? So they end up putting both of these in one connector, and then they put both of these in the small port, and what happens is now the whole system shorts out. So that's why if you're wiring things for the first time, I like having my transformer set up, I like having it wired in, so that say I've got 15 to 20 lights uh, already wired, already good to go, I'm going to turn my transformer on and see which ones work and see if I have any issues. Because then a lot of times when you get to the last one and you wire that last one, that's what causes the issue because they only use one connector. But what we want to do, we've still got our two 12 2 wires, so what we're going to do is we're going to put one of those in our large hole in our BBS2 connector, and then we've got our We've got our two wires from our fixture. We're going to take one of those and put it in our small terminal and we're going to lock that up. So in our last fixture, we're actually going to have an extra hole in here. And then we're going to repeat that again. 12 gauge wire in the big hole. Fixture wire in the small one. And we lock that up. So we still want to have two connections even at our last light. If you've wired all your lights and all of a sudden you uh, you short out the system, go check your last connection before you check anything else. But again, that's why even when I'm at this stage, what I'm gonna do, I've got my hole, I'm gonna wrap up all my wire, I'm gonna put my zip tie or I'm gonna put my uh, electrical tape on it or you can save that till after. I'm gonna stuff it in the hole and then I've got all my lights wired. That was my last one. So what I want to go do before I bury anything, my wire's still exposed, I want to go test it out. So I'm going to, for good luck, I'm going to grab a sip of my beer, my pop, whatever it is, whatever your taste is. Then I'm going to go flick on my transformer and go and make sure all my lights are working. Once that's done, then I can go and bury my wires because I know that I haven't messed anything up and it's way easier to find your mistake when everything's still exposed than when everything's buried. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.